is it right to do good though you might risk um falling to the, the wrong characters or people who harming you for trying to help out should we still do good is evil powerful than good anyway what up beautiful people it's your boy mundus and i want to welcome you to the shining light family and today we're going to look into the scriptures and understand why we need to be to do good you know we live in a world where it seems like evil prevails and it's not right it's not even okay to do good good anymore because if you do good people will take advantage of you and we're going to learn more about it today and our responsibility as christians what do we need to do in this world where evil seems to be prevailing we'll learn more about this today so if you're first time watching i want to welcome you to shine Life family please make sure you do subscribe I release a video daily where we study the scriptures. We look into God's word and under, understand the scriptures for ourselves. So um, if you're not a subscriber yet, subscribe and join this family. And today we're looking at keen to do good. And by the way, we analyze Rhapsody of Reality. This is the number one biggest devotion in the whole world by Pastor Chris. And this is the devotional where we do our Bible study from on a daily basis. So make sure you do subscribe and watch this video to the end because I want to pray for you. Um, I want to join my faith with your faith. And believe in God for whatever you believe in God for so that you can have the results you want. So it's important uh, you watch the video to the end. So let's get into it. So today we're talking about keen to do good. Why should we always be, do good? Despite it might look like evil is prevailing. But good is powerful than evil. But anyway, let me read the first the, uh, theme scripture. So the theme scripture is from Galatians chapter 6 in verse 9. And it says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. It says, Don't give up. Don't stop doing good. Though you might look like doing good does not get you anywhere. It says, oh, what's, the good? what's the point of doing good? It's not getting me anywhere. People that are doing wrong seem to be prospering people that are doing the wrong things seem to be on top he says no don't give up doing good because in the right time there'll be a reward he says if you faint not if you don't give up and maintain your integrity maintain be doing good you'll reap a reward but anyway let's get into the first paragraph let me read the first paragraph and we can get into this so perhaps the pastor Chris says nowadays that those who have resolved not to be kind and helpful to others anymore. Why? They have had bad experiences of seeing others who have been harmed or taken advantage of in their bid to help others. This is so true. I mean, it has happened to all of us. I mean, we have helped one person or the other, and it seems like they took advantage of us. We probably lost money. We, we, we probably, uh, some people even in the news, you, you see people that try to help people and they harm harm befalls them you know um, there's so many incidents in the news where people were trying to help out and then they ended up being the victims you know they were going to help out and ended up being victims and now we have social met uh, media where we, we can see these images and videos so people people are more people are more hardened no one wants to go and out of the way to help someone else or to 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 uh if someone's in trouble to get involved especially when somebody even if back in you know, when someone's getting robbed, for example, and you can help, most people won't try to even be involved with that. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to get involved. What if they rob me or beat me up? So it's like that fear. So evil seems to be prevailing, and any form of good is seen as weakness. And there's so much talk about that. But let me let me just read the second paragraph. So Pastor Chris says, our societies have become increasingly cruel such that many have shut their bowels of mercy and compassion many years ago if you were driving and saw someone who was stranded you were quick to help but because of so much evil in the world today many are more concerned about the danger of assisting strangers this is what evil has caused so people are like ah, should i get out of my car and rescue them or i'm, I'm gonna be, end up being robbed and i'll be end up be, uh, being a, a victim of a carjack which are all valid reasons. But as a Christian, our mentality is different. Because the word of God, this God knows everything. The future, you know what? Tomorrow is not tomorrow for God. You know, when, when we get into tomorrow, 
God is not going to be like, oh, it's tomorrow. I mean, today, I mean, two years from now is not new from God. Ten years from now, God is not going to be like, oh, we're in 2030 or whatever it is, 2029. No, the whole, there's no time in eternity. God has seen the end. He says he's the Alpha and the Omega. Everything is unveiled before him. He has seen the end. And based on that, he says, don't give up in doing good. He says, you shall rip, you shall, if you shall rip if you don't give up. It's a, you know, you shall, you shall rip a reward if you don't give up. Good is more powerful than evil. Just like light is more powerful than darkness. So it must seem on a temporal basis that evil is prevailing and we are wearing, we, 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 we don't want to be victims. God will never put us in harm's way. He will never do anything that will harm us or put us in danger. So when he tells you, don't stop doing, uh, don't give up because um, of the bad that's happening, you, you, you keep, you maintain your composure and you do what you got to do, directed by the Spirit. You know, this the, this, this is the most important thing. We got the Holy Ghost. He is the greater one and he leads us in exactly what to do and how to deal with things in this evil world that we live in. So this is this is so important. Um, so let's get into the next point. You know, let's read on. It says, evil has, has brought hardness of heart to many. They want to help, but they don't want to become victims at the end. But you see, you must never give up on doing good. Never be reluctant to help. For there is power in you that far outclasses all the power of the evil in the world put together. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are not helpless. Think about Jesus. The servants of the high priest came to arrest him. The Bible says, therefore, Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? That's John chapter 18, verse 4, by the way. Jesus said, Jesus of Na Jesus, they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Then he replied, I am he. That's in John 18, 5. Immediately the power of God was released, and they all fell under the power. Why did that happen? Okay, okay, okay. There's so much to talk about here. Hmm. Let me keep on reading and then we can, there's so much I want to say. So just, okay, just a short while before then in Matthew 26, Jesus had been praying in the garden of um, Gethsemane and the power of the Holy Ghost was surging through his being. And when he said, I am he, the word went forth with power. He wasn't empty. It is the same with you. Your words are filled with power because you carry divinity inside you. He had the power. He had the power of the spirit. No evil could befall him. In fact, one time, they wanted to throw Jesus across the cliff. Did you read that in the scriptures? They actually wanted to throw Jesus across the cliff. They, he was preaching and, they, and they, got, they got so upset and they grabbed him and they dragged him out of the city. And they were about to throw him over. But he disappeared and walked amongst them. Because there was so much power. Let me show you this actually because... We need to know the scriptures. We need to know the power that we have. That's in the book of Luke, chapter 4, and verse 30. Verse 30, verse 28. Let's start from 28. I'm reading the Amplified Version so you can see it clearly. Um, let me highlight that. It said, And they had these things about God's grace to these two Gentiles. The people in the synagogue were filled with great rage, right? They were so angry. And they got up and drove him out of the city. Who? They drove Jesus, by the way. He was, he, he was Jesus that was, pre, was talking. They're talking about, if you read the previous verses. So they got up and drove him out of the city and led him to the crest of the hill, that is on top of a cliff, on which the city had been built, in order to haul him down the cliff. They wanted to throw Jesus ac across the cliff. But read the next, oh my God, this is beautiful. The next verse, it says, But passing miraculously through the crowd, he went, out, he went on his way. <laughs> he disappeared in front of the eyes. Remember, this was a crowd. They grabbed him. They were about to throw him down. But he disappeared. They couldn't find him no more. They were looking for him. Where is he? Where is he? He, 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 he disappeared in their midst. This happened more than once. 
This happened several times. In fact, several times they wanted to stone Jesus. There's another occasion. Um, it's in the book. Let me let me find the scripture. I wrote it down. That's in John. Um, the book of John. Let's look at King James. John chapter 5. The book of John chapter 8, verse 59. So Jesus is speaking to them. He says, from 58, he said, Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to cast it, to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, so passed by. Do you understand what just happened right there? He was in the temple in the midst of all of them. They could see him. They were ready to throw stones at him. But he said, but Jesus hid himself. How did he hide himself? How are you going to hide yourself in front of a crowd like that? And he's going to go behind someone, sneak behind someone. He says he hid himself and went out of the temple. Going through the midst of them. He said he passed through them. He hid himself. And how, okay, if you're hiding yourself, how are you hiding yourself? If you, if you Look, if someone wants to do harm to you, right? And you see they're right there hiding yourself. You'll be like, oh, let me go hide behind the corner and maybe go behind them so that they cannot see me. But he said, Jesus hid himself and he went in front of them. Going through their midst, he saw passed by. That tells you something. They couldn't see him. He was invisible. He disappeared in front of their eyes. And he walked through and they couldn't see him. <laughs> this is a miracle. This is this is amazing. That's like a little verse right there. And, and you know, a lot of people don't understand. That's a miracle that took place. They were about to throw stones at him. And he disappears in front of the eyes. This, he has done this several times. I showed you in Luke 4.30 when they tried to throw him across the cliff. The, um, the cliff he disappeared. And here they were about to throw, him, uh, to, to throw stones at him. He disappears. The same power that's in Jesus is upon us. The same Holy Spirit that was in him is in us. So you can see how evil cannot prevail against good. We have the power that is greater and stronger than any evil. No matter what harm they're trying to do us, the Spirit of God will put us over. If we need to disappear like Jesus, we'll disappear. Oh, glory be to God. That's awesome. So much to talk about. Like, um, So yeah, let's keep on reading this. Where are we? Uh, so Pascal says, what you need is... Is the Spirit's admonition in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. It says, be not drunk with wine when is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. When you're filled with the Spirit, you never have to bother about being victimized for doing good. Because the Holy Ghost is your protector. He is the greatest, greater is He that's in you. The same way He protected Jesus, He protects us. Several times they're trying to throw Jesus off the cliff. They're trying to stone him. They're trying to grab him. But they, they couldn't do none of this. Because the Spirit of God was with him and was upon him. Therefore, before you hit the road or get up, get about the day's business, get filled with the Holy Ghost. He will lead and guide you through all good things. He will put in your heart to do. It, and no one will be able to harm or deter you. Praise God forevermore. So don't be afraid. Be filled with the Spirit. Be so full of the Holy Ghost, He will give you the strategies. When He tells you to hide, He says, no, leave it. You, you, you'll hear His voice and say, no, nah, I should not. I should get out of here. So you're not just blindly going like, oh my God, I'm just helping people randomly. But you're not aware with the Spirit. Yesterday's Rhapsody, remember we, uh, we did a video yesterday talking about without Him, we can't do anything. We walk by the Spirit. This is, an, this is like a, God is admonishing us to live by the Spirit. Everything we do, if, if it's to help in others, if to do good, we all do it through the Spirit. That's where the blessing is. We're not trying to do it through our own mind. No, it's through, through the Holy Ghost. Leading us. Guiding us. And, and, and doing good to all men. Not being deterred like, oh my God, what's the point of doing good? Do things or bad things happen? No. Be quick to first think of helping before thinking about what will happen to you. Because you have the Holy Spirit. Don't be quick to be like, oh, nah, what if this happens to me? No, no. Let me show you one more scripture. All right, 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 right. We're looking at scriptures. <laughs> so many scriptures today. But it's important. Because you know what? Why should we look at scriptures? 
it is not based on human thinking because if it was based on human assumptions it will fail but if it's based on god's word we are assured of victory so look the same book of Luke, look Luke chapter 10 uh if you're christians we gotta act different chapter 10 verse 30 right hmm maybe before before i show you this before i show you this before we go to that book I want us to read the father's story. Let's go to the Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3. Yeah, let's put it. Proverbs chapter 3 in verse 27, right? It says, Withhold not good from them to whom it is due. When it's in thy power of, when it's in the power of thy hand to do it. Say not to, unto thy neighbor, go and come again tomorrow, and I'll give. Then thou hast it, when thou hast it by thee. <laughs> I know the King James sounds so deep. Basically saying, you don't, you don't deny someone to help them when you can do it right now. Don't tell them, come tomorrow, I'll be able to help you. If you can help them now, do it now. He says, say, say not unto thy neighbor. He says, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give. When thou hast it by thee. He says, if you have it, you can help them. You don't say to your neighbor, go and come tomorrow. You don't behold good. Don't behold good. Distribute it. Be quick to give. Okay. Um, and this pleases God. Today we are looking at a lot of scripture. I'm not sure another scripture. Another scripture. Uh, Hebrews. Let's look at the book of he Hebrews chapter 13. Uh... How doing good is a sacrifice. God is pleased when you help out. I want to show you this. So Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 16. But this time we will read the NIV version. This is part of the Father's study. It says, And do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Do you want to please God? He says, don't forget to do good and share with others. This is how we please God. It's all in the scriptures. I want to please God, so I want to, sh I want to share with others, Lord. If this pleases God, he says, this God, for such sacrifices, God is pleased. God likes such sacrifices. You know, all the sacrifices like, oh, man, I go to church every single day. This is good. It's all good. But, is on being practical on the things of God. Okay, so let us go to the book of Luke. That's where I wanted to show you. Uh, chapter 10 and verse 30. And by the way, if this video is not showing right, I apologize in advance. I'm t uh, I have a new phone, so um, I'm trying to figure out the best way to show you these videos. So if you can't see anything, please listen to the, the video. I, I really apologize, and I'm trying to rectify this, so don't worry about it. It will be sorted out quite soon, so bear with me. So anyway, from verse 30. Oh, no. Let's start from verse 28. This, actually, let me tell you a background story. This was like a, someone, a lawyer that came to Jesus and said, Oh, what do I need to do to inter inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, Go keep the commandment. Okay, you know what? Let's, let's read the whole context. From verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered and said, Thou, thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And Jesus said, on, and he said unto him, Thou answerest right, this do, and thou shalt live. So Jesus said, you wanna, This is what you got to do. Follow what the, uh, the law says. But he, willing to justify himself, the lawyer, said unto Jesus, Who is my neighbor? So he's asking Jesus, Who is my neighbor? And I want you to remember the scripture we just read. It says, Do not withhold good from thy neighbor, right? So the lawyer asked Jesus, Who is, our na who is thy neighbor? So let's find out who is the neighbor that, that, that he refers to. Love thy neighbor. As thyself, who is our neighbor? 
Let's, let's let Jesus answer this. And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at that place, came and looked on him and passed on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed and came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow when he had departed, he took out two pence, and gave him to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was a neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, Go and do likewise. Did you see that? The, right, the people that need to show good to help out did not. The priest walked the other way. The Levite walked the other way. It was a stranger that helped this stranger. Someone was being robbed. We, it, this happens a lot in our society. We see someone being robbed, being carjacked. People try to look the other way and act like it's not happening. He's like, no, I don't want to get involved if something happens to me. People, people get go through crazy things in front of our eyes in daylight. And we act like we didn't see it because we want to get involved. So we are acting like the Levite and the priest. Then how are we supposed to go to church and be like, oh, I worship you, Lord, I love you. And then we saw someone, something bad happening and we ignored it. This is not right. And this is what Jesus is saying. This is our neighbor. That we, need to, we need to act. We need to do good and not be intimidated by evil. So that's the point. And Pastor said, before you go out, be filled with the Spirit. Because the Holy Ghost will give you the power and the, and the wisdom on how to deal with every situation. So you won't have to think, oh, what if, what if that happens? No, the Spirit of God will, will lead you. And you'll know exactly what to do. Glory be to God forevermore. Anyway, let's take this prayer together, right? Just repeat this after me. Dear Lord, thank you for blessing me and making me a blessing. Such that in every situation, I have all I need for every good work. I'm never weary of doing good because I'm guided by the Spirit to be a blessing to my world. In Jesus' name, amen. You can read Galatians 6, 9, 10, Hebrews 13, 16. We just read that. Proverbs 3, 27. And you can go through the whole Bible in one year or two years. So you pick a plan that works for you. Man, I hope you've been blessed by today's devotion. I want to I know your thoughts and your comments. You know, how, how, how can we go about doing good? How, what, what, what's your plans? What's the Spirit of God ministering to you? Make sure you leave me in the comments below. I mean, if you have a testimony of helping someone, leave it in the comment section. I want to read such testimonies where, where you helped someone and the Spirit of God led you. Or maybe you just reached out. So put it in the comment section um, if you went through such, such a thing so that others can read and be encouraged. And... I want to pray before we go. I want to pray. If you're not born again, let's start there. I want to pray for everyone. But first, let me pray for some, for people that are not born again. If you're not born again and you don't know Jesus as a Lord and Savior, this is your moment to receive salvation for your soul. You know, Jesus died for you. He did the ultimate good where he died for all humanity. He paid the price for their sins so that we could be free. And all you have to do is believe that and accept it in your heart. Believe Jesus died for you confess him as lord of your life and you're saved it's a free gift and i want to lead you into this prayer of salvation so say this after me and uh mean it with all your heart just say this after me oh lord god i believe with all my heart in jesus christ son of the living god i believe he died for me i believe you raised him from the dead I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name, I have eternal life. I'm born again. 
Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God. Hallelujah forevermore. Congratulations. If you say that prayer, you're born again. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can learn God's word. That will build your faith strong and transform your life. And I want to pray for anyone else that the hand of God will be upon you strong. The Spirit of God will lead you, guide you into doing all good. And you'll be safe going out. No evil before you. No weapon fashioned against you can prosper. You are protected on every way. You are protected going out. You are protected coming in. Your steps are ordered of the Lord. None of your steps slide. You walk in safety. You dwell in safety. No harm can be before you. In the name of Jesus, glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Well, that's been amazing. Until tomorrow, it's been your boy Mundus. Be victorious and prosperous in all you do. God bless you.